situations in which we have multiple opportunities in front of us or multiple paths that we can choose to take. One path to go down and feel daunting. So choosing one path can mean giving up all the others. And what works is, if we make the wrong decision, we risk regretting that choice down the line. And wishing that we could go back in time and choose a different path to travel. So, how do we avoid this kind of regret? So, I say that what we need is a point on the distance to focus on as we meander our way through life. Or in other words, what we really need is a purpose. And what I want to talk about, and I claim that a person can find a purpose at the intersection of their passions, their strengths, and the positive and the positive impact that they want to make on the world. Let's call that intersection the nexus. And what I want to talk about is how an individual can identify their personal nexus. Okay, so let's start with passion which are anything we pursue, even when we don't have an obligation to do so. And in that sense, a uh, passion that I have is reaching a higher score on tennis. <laughs> it's not something I would be professional in, but it's still very much a passion on my list. And a person can have more than one passion. In fact, it's probably healthy to want to spend our time on more than one thing. Because having a single track mind closes us off from all the other possibilities that are out there. And that brings me to my point about how passions aren't just like this intuitive aspect of who we are. Passions, for the most part, are found through exploration and having new experiences. And the path to find them isn't always linear. For instance, I used to be crazy passionate about perpetual motion machines, which for those of the audience who don't know, are predicated on the false idea that we can build machines that generate infinite amounts of energy. You see, when I was 10, I didn't understand the basic laws of thermodynamics. So I would spend hours on end, cooped up in my garage, tinkering with magnets and circuits, circuits, working on projects that were all doomed to fail. And the crazy thing is that my parents actually supported me doing all this. And to this day, I still have no idea why. <laughs> but I'm so grateful that they did. Because the scientific concepts that I learned from that experience allowed me to later dream up and work on other projects I was passionate about. From the wireless charger that I patented to solar panels, to augmented reality, to combustion engines, and even to fruit roll catapults. So passions are what we voluntarily spend our time pursuing. Once we know what those are, we can begin to think about what we're good at. Or given time and effort, what we could be better at. These are our strengths. And frankly, the passions don't have a pretty large overlap, right? Because if we're passionate about something, we tend to spend more time on it and thus become pretty good at it. But this overlap still isn't going to be 100%, at least not for most of us. Uh, for example, let's say I was four feet tall, or let's be honest, even at my current height, five nine, or five eight. And <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I was really passionate about basketball, and, uh, saying that my end goal was to play in the NBA. But so it's not impossible, right? But working towards that might not be the optimal use of my time. Because there's an actual cap on how effective I can be based on my situation. Similarly, being good at something doesn't necessarily mean we have to enjoy it. There's this pressure that exists in society for us to just do what we're good at. Because you know, if we're, we excel at something, why bother spending our time just honing less important skills? Well, no matter how skilled we are at something, passion is still required for us to achieve the amazing things that we're all capable of doing. Because I can guarantee that when anyone gets to a high enough level in any field worth pursuing, they will at some point hit a wall. There will come a time when it's four in the morning, your code will compile for the millionth time, your musical composition just doesn't sound quite right, 
a character in your story isn't quite clicking. And at these times, when we can't see success on the horizon and we're not being forced to keep going, the only way we'll persevere, knowing full well that we may fail, is if we're motivated by strong passion to press onward. Otherwise, we will give up, either because it's easier or simply for the sake of our own sanity. Thus, without passion, we will never unlock our true potential strength. But passion and strength still aren't enough for a purpose on their own. Remember, a key element of having a purpose is to make sure that we don't regret our decisions down the line. Positive impact and actually helping others is what truly gives us meaning. And without this meaning, regret is inevitable. And positive impact can happen in lots of ways. It doesn't have to be the sole focus of all our energy. Positive impact does not mean suffering so that others can somehow be happier. And we don't have to change the world on a fundamental level to be proud of the impact that we've made. The positive impact section of our Venn diagram should be filled with changes that we want to see in our society. The positive impact that makes it into our nexus should be a change that we would actively enjoy learning about and should be one that we're skilled enough to pursue. For instance, uh, if I was, if a positive impact that I care about was inspiring people that hope, and one of my passions and skills was storytelling, I could write books or make films that would help people make sense of the world in a way that makes them feel better. But how to bring about that positive impact isn't always that straightforward. Uh, and for instance, I, a positive impact that I've cared about for a very long time is working to help climate change. And as I said before, one of my passions and one of my skills is ethics. And at first, the two don't seem remotely related. But as it turns out, Tetris blocks can be used to model molecular absorption patterns, which in turn can be used to make solar panels more efficient. And, and yes, there are plenty of other skills I need to learn in order to like really make a dent in the world energy world energy problem. But just the sheer idea that I can use something that I enjoy doing and something that I'm like something that I'm skilled at to bring about a change that I want to make is just one example of how my nexus has shown me a route that I'd really be excited to explore and a path that I'd be really excited to go down. So in conclusion, when it comes to finding our purpose, we really need all three of these. Without passions, we end up without joy. Without impact, we end up with regrets. And without strength, no matter how badly we want it, we end up with frustration. We won't get anything done. And figuring out what lies at our respective emphasis is no small feat. Figuring out what we're passionate about, owning our skills, and using all of that to work for the cause of change can take years to do right. Even with this system, I'm still trying to figure out what my purpose is. I'm still exploring, and believe me, I'm making plenty of mistakes along the way. But because I know the necessary elements that go into being a purposeful life, I'm less afraid of making a wrong choice because I have a framework for, for pursuing one of many right choices in my own nexus. And keep in mind, as we grow, as we evolve, our nexuses will grow and evolve with us. We can always shift the direction we choose to go in. But at the end of the day, if we stay true to what we love, work hard, develop my skills in those areas, all the while choosing to be part of something bigger than ourselves, neither we nor the world will regret us taking the road not traveled. Thank you.